This free step-by-step -step video comes to you directly from Haynes. You can complete more than 200 jobs on this vehicle when you purchase the complete Haynes online manual at haynes.com. Coolant pump renewal. Pull the bonnet release lever located in the passenger's footwell. Lift the bonnet slightly, depress the safety catch, fully raise the bonnet and support it with the prop. Using the tool provided in the vehicle toolkit, undo the fastener and remove the wheel centre cap where fitted. Then using the locking wheel bolt adapter where necessary, slacken each of the wheel bolts half a turn. Position the workshop jack under the lower arm front mounting point with a piece of wood on the jack head. Then raise the vehicle until the tyre is clear of the ground. Place an axle stand under the sill flange at the jacking point, indicated by an arrow pressed into the sill. Remove the jack. If required, repeat this procedure on the other side of the vehicle. Fully unscrew the bolts and remove the wheel. Engine under tray. Undo the two screws securing the under tray to the bumper. Undo the five remaining screws and remove the under tray. The front section of the wheel arch liner is secured by several fasteners. Undo the two screws at the lower front edge, then prise out the remaining clips and remove the front section of the wheel arch liner. Prise off the plastic cover from the tensioner. Using a T50 Torx bit, undo the central bolt and remove the tensioner. A new one must be fitted. Remove the old belt from around the pulleys. Disconnection. Pull the bonnet release lever located in the passenger's footwell. Lift the bonnet slightly, depress the safety catch, fully raise the bonnet and support it with the prop. Release the clips, then remove the battery main cover and the side cover. Slacken the retaining nut, then with a twisting motion, pull the negative lead clamp from the battery negative terminal. Position the clamp to one side to prevent accidental reconnection. Removal. Unclip the transmission breather hose from the side of the air cleaner housing. Disconnect the hose, then slacken the clamp securing the air outlet hose to the throttle body. Pull the housing upwards to release the rubber mountings, then disconnect the air inlet duct. Unclip the air intake ducting from the front panel. Undo the bolt and remove the oil filler extension. Plug the opening to prevent contamination. Disconnect the vacuum and breather hoses from the rear of the inlet manifold. Note their fitted positions, then disconnect the various wiring plugs from the manifold. Remove the engine oil level dipstick, then cover the hole to prevent contamination. Pull the HT caps from the spark plugs and unclip them from the manifold. It's essential the HT caps are refitted to their original locations. Depress the release button and disconnect the fuel pipe at the right hand side of the manifold. Be prepared for fuel spillage. Cover the openings to prevent contamination. Undo the lower retaining bolts, then the upper retaining bolts, and remove the manifold. Plug the inlet ports in the cylinder head to prevent contamination. Removal Unclip the coolant hose at the left-hand end of the engine and move it to one side. Undo the bolt and move the wiring loom guide to one side. 
undo the retaining nuts and disconnect the wiring terminals from the starter motor solenoid. Undo the lower and upper mounting bolts, then remove the starter motor. Removal Undo the bolt and remove the cover from the lower section of the transmission bell housing. The crankshaft must now be held stationary in order to loosen the crankshaft pulley bolt. Jam the flywheel ring gear with a pry bar, or preferably fit the correct flywheel locking tool. Engage the teeth of the locking tool with the ring gear on the flywheel, then bolt it to the bell housing. Undo the central bolt and remove the crankshaft pulley. Note that a new bolt will be required. Temporarily refit the crankshaft pulley bolt. Remove the flywheel locking tool. Support the engine under the sump using a jack and a block of wood. Undo the bolts and remove the right hand engine mounting assembly. Release the clip and move the wiring loom at the rear of the timing belt cover to one side. Undo the bolts and remove the timing belt upper cover, followed by the centre cover and lower cover. If necessary, use a little abrasive paper or cloth to clean the hole in the engine block where the setting tool is to be inserted. Turn the crankshaft pulley bolt clockwise until an 8mm rod or drill can be inserted through the hole in the cylinder block into the corresponding hole in the flywheel. The crankshaft is now set to top dead centre, or TDC, on number one cylinder. With the crankshaft set, the arrow marks on the camshaft sprocket and camshaft cover should align. If the marks are 180 degrees out, remove the crankshaft setting tool, rotate the engine one complete revolution and refit the setting tool. The marks on the sprocket and camshaft cover should now align. Slacken the retaining nut, then use an allen key to rotate the tensioner clockwise and relieve the belt tension. Remove the timing belt from the sprockets. Fully unscrew the nut and remove the tensioner. A new tensioner must be fitted. To drain the system, first remove the expansion tank filler cap. Place a suitable container beneath the left hand side of the radiator then release the clamp and disconnect the lower hose. When the coolant has finished draining, reconnect the lower hose and secure it with the clamp. Remove the drain container from under the vehicle. Undo the bolts securing the coolant pump to the engine block. Disconnect the wiring plug, then undo the nut and disconnect the battery positive lead from the alternator. Undo the upper and lower mounting bolts and manoeuvre the alternator from place. On models with air conditioning, disconnect the wiring plug, undo the mounting bolts and move the compressor to one side. There's no need to disconnect the refrigerant pipes. Undo the retaining bolt and pull the coolant pipe from the rear of the pump. Undo the bolts and remove the alternator and compressor mounting bracket. Carefully release the pump from the engine block. Remove any trace of the old gasket and sealant from the engine block mating surface. Prise the old o-ring seal from the coolant pipe, 
locate the new one into the groove, then lubricate it with a little coolant pump assembly grease. Locate the new gasket over the dowels in the engine block, then manoeuvre the new pump into place. Ensure it locates correctly on the dowels. Insert the pump retaining bolts and tighten them to the specified torque. Slide the coolant pipe into the pump, but don't fit the retaining bolt yet. Refit the alternator and compressor mounting bracket, then tighten the retaining bolts to the specified torque. Insert the coolant pipe retaining bolt and tighten it securely. Refit the air conditioning compressor and tighten the bolts to the specified torque. Reconnect the wiring plug to the compressor. Manoeuvre the alternator into position, then tighten the retaining bolts to the specified torque. Reconnect the wiring plug, then refit the battery positive lead terminal to the alternator and tighten it securely. Fitting Check the mark on the camshaft pulley is still aligned with the mark on the camshaft cover, and the mark on the crankshaft sprocket is aligned with the mark on the oil pump flange. The new tensioner should be supplied with a locking pin in place. Don't remove the pin at this stage. Maneuver the new tensioner into position, ensuring it fits correctly around the lug in the casting, then fit the retaining nut. Don't tighten the nut at this stage. The new belt has alignment marks which correspond to the marks on the camshaft and crankshaft sprockets and direction of rotation arrows. Fit the timing belt over the crankshaft and camshaft sprockets and around the coolant pump pulley, ensuring that the belt run is taut, i.e. all slack is on the tensioner pulley side of the belt. Then fit the belt around the tensioner pulley. Where applicable, line up the two timing reference marks on the belt with the timing marks on the crankshaft and camshaft sprockets. Do not twist the belt sharply during refitting, and do make sure that the belt teeth are correctly seated centrally in the sprockets and that the timing marks remain in alignment. Remove the tensioner locking pin. Then rotate the tensioner anti-clockwise and align the index pointer with the notch in the back plate. Hold the tensioner stationary and tighten the retaining nut. If removed, temporarily refit the old crankshaft pulley bolt, remove the crankshaft locking tool then rotate the crankshaft six complete revolutions clockwise and realign the camshaft and crankshaft timing marks. Fit the Allen key, then loosen the tensioner nut and turn the eccentric hub until the index pointer is in the middle of the notch in the tensioner backplate. Tighten the tensioner nut to the specified torque. Check that the tensioner pulley is not in contact with the cylinder head. If it is, remove and refit it. Remove and discard the old crankshaft pulley bolt. Don't discard the washer. Refit the timing belt lower cover and tighten the retaining bolts to the specified torque. Refit the timing belt upper cover and tighten the retaining bolts to the specified torque. Maneuver the right hand engine mounting into position, ensuring the locating pin engages correctly. Refit the various retaining bolts and tighten them to the specified torque. Clip the wiring loom back into place. 
Remove the jack and block of wood from under the engine. Refit the crankshaft pulley, then insert the new bolt with the old washer. Refit the flywheel locking tool to the bell housing to prevent the crankshaft from rotating. Tighten the crankshaft pulley bolt to the specified torque and angle. Remove the flywheel locking tool. Refit the cover to the lower section of the bell housing and tighten the retaining bolt securely. Fitting. Maneuver the starter motor into position, ensuring it locates over the dowel. Insert the upper and lower mounting bolts, then tighten them to the specified torque. Reconnect the wiring terminals to the solenoid, then tighten the retaining nut securely. Move the wiring loom guide into position, then refit the bolt and tighten it securely. Clip the coolant hose into place. Refitting. Remove any traces of gasket, sealant or dirt from the cylinder head mating surfaces. Prise out the old seals, clean the grooves, then press new seals into place on the manifold. Remove the plugs from the inlet ports and ensure the mating surfaces are still clean. Carefully manoeuvre the inlet manifold into position. Insert the upper and lower bolts into their locations in the manifold. The lower centre bolts are difficult to insert. Use a magnetic tool to hold the bolts, then insert them. Tighten the lower and upper retaining bolts to the specified torque. Remove the caps and reconnect the fuel pipe. Firmly press the HT caps into their original locations on the top of the spark plug. Then clip the HT leads into place on the inlet manifold. Remove the cap and refit the engine oil level dipstick. Reconnect the various wiring plugs to their original locations on the manifold. Refit the breather hose, then reconnect the vacuum hoses to the manifold. Refit the oil filler extension and tighten the retaining bolt securely. Clip the air intake duct back into place on the front panel. The air cleaner housing is secured by four rubber mountings. Maneuver the housing into position, connect the air outlet hose to the throttle body and the air intake duct to the front of the housing. Press the housing firmly down to engage the mountings. Tighten the air outlet hose clamp and reconnect the hose. Clip the transmission breather hose to the side of the air cleaner housing. The tensioner mounting piece locates in the mounting bracket. Position the mounting piece, then fit the new tensioner and lightly tighten the central bolt. Locate the belt around the pulleys, ensuring the belt ribs locate correctly in the pulley grooves. Using a spanner on the hexagonal section, rotate the tensioner anti-clockwise, tension the belt, then tighten the T50 Torx bolt securely. Press the cover back into the centre of the tensioner. Maneuver the wheel arch liner back into position and secure it with the various fasteners. Reconnection. 
Press the negative lead clamp down over the battery negative terminal, then tighten the retaining nut securely. Refit the battery covers, ensuring the clips engage correctly. Unclip the transmission breather hose from the side of the air cleaner housing. Disconnect the hose, then slacken the clamp securing the air outlet hose to the throttle body. Pull the housing upwards to release the rubber mountings, then disconnect the air inlet duct. The filter element cover is secured by five captive screws. Undo the screws. Lift away the cover and remove the filter element. Using a funnel, add a 50-50 mix of antifreeze and water to the expansion tank to bring the level to the max mark. Place a rag beneath the heater pipes, then unscrew the cap from the bleed point. As soon as bubble-free coolant emerges, refit the cap. Unscrew the cap from the bleed point on the thermostat housing. As soon as bubble-free coolant emerges, refit the cap. Remove all dirt and debris from the filter housing and cover. Locate the new filter element into the cover, then refit the cover to the housing and tighten the retaining screws securely. The air cleaner housing is secured by four rubber mountings. Maneuver the housing into position, connect the air outlet hose to the throttle body and the air intake duct to the front of the housing. Press the housing firmly down to engage the mountings. Tighten the air outlet hose clamp and reconnect the hose. Clip the transmission breather hose to the side of the air cleaner housing. Position the tray under the vehicle, then insert and tighten the five retaining screws. Refit and tighten the two screws securing the front of the under tray to the bumper. Locate the wheel on the hub, then insert and lightly tighten the retaining bolts. Raise the vehicle and remove the axle stands. Lower the vehicle to the ground and tighten the bolts to the specified torque. Refix the centre cap and tighten the fastener. Add coolant until it reaches the max level line on the expansion tank. Remove the funnel and securely refit the filler cap. Start the engine and run it at a fast idle speed, do not exceed 1500 RPM, for approximately 4 minutes. Keep the level topped up to the top of the expansion tank filler neck. Switch off the engine and allow it to cool completely. Check the level and add coolant if necessary to bring the level to the max mark. Securely refit the filler cap. Remove the prop from the bonnet, then clip the prop into the storage bracket and close the bonnet.